On this episode of The Fisherman TV, Associate Editor and Charter Captain Joe Wenajanowski is in hot pursuit of the Northeast's inshore speedsters, False Albacore. Joining him is Greg Nacito, the East Coast sales rep for Yozori. Stay tuned. You're watching The Fisherman TV, brought to you by Yozori. Albacore don't get the attention they deserve. I mean, the false albacore we're talking about. Uh, it's just almost like the angling heritage up here in the Northeast is the, the meat fishing mentality and their food value isn't particularly high. So a lot of people, unless you're you know into fly fishing, the light spinning gear and all that stuff, most people don't see the value in catching something just to throw it back. They're sadly mistaken because they, they're so much fun. They're so incredibly addictive. I would catch albacore all day over bass and bluefish if I had the choice any day of the week. Uh, well, false albacore, they're uh, basically uh, in, the, in the same family as the tunas and mackerels. They're semi-pelagic. They do come inshore, and that's what makes them readily accessible to the light tackle guys, particularly uh, in places like Montauk, throughout New England, the Jersey Shore. And uh, every year they tend to come in you know, more or less around like the middle to the end of uh, August uh, and tend to leave by the middle of October and they present an incredible opportunity for light tackle enthusiasts to hook into something that can really rip drag. Uh, we did see some splashes initially, that's why Joe stopped the boat there and said we're here and there's fish here and then we basically went to blind casting at that point in time and I think probably on the first or the second uh, cast, I think we had uh, one hooked up. There you go. You don't even know he's hooked yet. You will in a minute. Keep fishing. Ready. Keep fishing, Greg. Be good. They always want to swim at you and put slack in the line. You got to keep that thing. Yeah, <laughs> Fight your fish until he's tired out, and then when he's tired out, uh, usually the way to land them is uh, either netting them or grabbing them by the tail. They've got a, a very uh, hard tail that allows you to grip them and actually lift them out of the water by the tail. Fish. Best way to release a false albacore is the torpedo release. They're going to have their mouth agape a little bit, point their head down to the water, and literally launch them in there like you know a torpedo. And that initial rush of oxygenated water over their gills is just going to get them kicking right away. Uh, you're not going to be reviving them, running them back and forth like you would a bass. 
tackle I recommend to use for false albacore. Something that can throw light stuff but has backbone to spare. Some of the offerings I'm throwing to these things are as light as a, a quarter of an ounce. So you want something that's got, you know, that, that mid-range. I like something that can throw like, you know, a quarter to like three quarters of an ounce. That's ideal. Those are the, that's pretty much matches the size of most everything you're going to be throwing, whether it be a tin, a jig, a soft plastic, a stick bait, whatever. And again, you want backbone to that rod. So you want that snappy tip that will be able to deliver those light lures, but you want something that the fish is not going to be able to kick your butt on. Reels, it's, it's the same thing. You want something that's got a high speed gear ratio because the typical way that you're going to drop uh, an alby when you hook up is not keeping tight on them. That comes from their rapid directional uh, changes and oftentimes you hook one up, it'll run straight at you or you hook it deep and it'll run right to the surface. You have to keep pace with them. Um, any sort of slack in that line, any sort of belly from them moving quickly is going to give that hook an opportunity to pull and fall out. There we go, doubled up! <laughs> yeah, buddy! Woo! As typical with any sort of fishing, you want to match the hatch. And that's especially true with these fish. Their eyesight is very keen and they are keyed on, on really, really small stuff. Um, bay anchovies and spearing, that's why you need these really fast action, you know, light rods that can actually throw these things some sort of distance because I don't like rolling right up on top of these schools. I like getting a little bit ahead of them and using casting distance to close the gap. These fish have amazing eyesight, as do all tunas, and you want to use light leader material that's not going to spook these fish out. So I use anywhere from 10 to 15 pound fluorocarbon, and I emphasize the use of fluorocarbon, again, because of the eyesight of these fish. You want something that's going to disappear in the water. Fluorocarbon's very uh, low stretch, and it also has a very, very hard coating on the outside of it, which allows uh, you to handle a lot more uh, nicks on the line without breaking, breaking it off. Primarily, one of the biggest advantages is that it, uh, the rate of sink, its, its density is very, very similar uh, to water. So it doesn't float and it doesn't sink it kind of stays neutrally buoyant. So it acts just as a great invisible leader material. It's hard, abrasion resistance, low stretch, and um, the pink color makes it extra invisible. You're up ahead of the school of fish and you're casting toward them and that's the side that the wind is blowing at you from. And you have these little tiny tins that might be a quarter of an ounce trying to penetrate the wind and get a good cast without spooking the school, it can be really frustrating sometimes. It can be really frustrating sometimes. And I, uh, I know that's why Greg was using that little, uh, little casting cork today in hopes of getting a little bit better casting distance with those really lightweight offerings. And he was hooking up, it was working. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm on. Yes. 
Oh, oh, no, he's... No, he's got pressure on him. Yeah, he's still there. I'm trying to rank the hell out of him. Come on, come on, you boy. It is a real hunt with the false albacore. It's kind of like a, a cat and mouse game where you're here one second and then they're there the next second. And you're constantly playing this whole back and forth, trying to stay ahead of the fish, trying to figure out where they're gonna pop up after they've been down deep for a while. And uh, it's that challenge that makes it so entertaining. Frustrating, but entertaining. Uh, catching these things because you do feel a sense of accomplishment when you actually do sink your hook into uh, the lip of one of these little guys. The lures that we use today that were effective and caught fish were the 3DB, the crystal minnow from 3 inch on down, the pins minnow either in 2 and 3 quarter inch or 3 inch size all with some sort of silver tone to them. Uh, the fluorocarbon we were using today was the pink Yozori fluorocarbon and we didn't go anything higher than 15 pound test. Uh, 12, 15 pound test is perfect and keep your line, your monofilament, if you're using monofilament, around 10 pound test so you'll get good casting distance out of it. If you haven't tried fishing for false albacore, uh, it's something that you have to do. It's something that you have to do at least once, and it's not going to be just once. It's going to be the start of something much bigger than that. They are perhaps the most addictive inshore species that you can catch. If you like striped bass, you like bluefish, well, here's a fish that's a quarter of the size, pulls four times as hard, and is only here for part of the year. So the excitement of actually catching one, short duration you have to actually catch one, it just it makes it a little gold rush wherever they pop up. And that's why people come from literally all over the world uh, to catch these things on light tackle in Montauk every fall. But wherever you happen to live, whether it be down in Jersey, whether it be up in Massachusetts, you have equal opportunity to catch these things if you know your waters and you know where these fish are gonna pop up given the time of year.